Good morning. I'm Christina Hedchikian, Executive Director of the Rastandi Center for Social Sector Innovation. I am thrilled to be hosting this fantastic lineup of speakers today as we dig into Pipelines to Success. I am also excited to be representing the Rastandi Center for Social Sector Innovation at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. We are the hub for social impact at Chicago Booth for those seeking to solve complex social and environmental problems. Our work is rooted in the insight that almost everyone wants to find a way to leverage their unique toolkit, often in our case a business toolkit, to impact the issues they care about, whether that means ending hunger or preserving our planet. Any individual's most salient path to their own personal impact is by leveraging their most salient tools. And the Rasandi Center, being based at a business school housed at the University of Chicago, you won't be surprised to learn that we spend a lot of time thinking about the power of markets and how they operate. Consider that our unique, unique toolkit. And as I pondered our conversation today, it occurred to me that building pipelines to success in social impact is really about mobilizing people and organizations. And if you think about that at the 30,000 foot view, it's really about, you guessed it, markets. But you might be thinking markets are for Wall Street, not social innovation, or maybe you have the inkling, like me, that they are ripe to be co-opted by do-gooders like us. So I wanna tell you a story about how a market-based solution that grew out of Chicago Booth solved a problem quite far from Wall Street. A few years ago, Quaker Oats gave 20,000 pounds of surplus cereal bars to an organization called Feeding America, which is the umbrella organization for food banks in the United States. Each of the two, near uh, 200 local food banks wanted these cereal bars, but to get it, they actually had to compete for it. Bidding opened at 10 a.m., and by noon, Kansas City, Missouri, had won the bars for more than 11,000 shares. Feeding America's bidding system was developed by faculty members at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. It's a method of online, non-cash bidding that lets food banks compete for products they want from about 75 truckloads of food donated every day. Now, the local food banks lose more often than they win, but this approach is far better than the old system. In the old system, one they used for 15 years, Feeding America assigned donations by simply rotating down a list. That system would sometimes leave food rotting in Rhode Island, cause chicken to go from Alaska to Alabama, or flood Florida with even more orange juice. No joke. What was needed was a system that would make kind of a, the transparent market with kind of a few tweaks to make it fair. So here's where the research came in. The faculty devised a system whereby shares were allocated to food banks on a daily basis based on the poverty level and population of that food bank's community to ensure small food banks could sometimes outbid their much larger peers, smaller ones would get more shares, larger lines of credit, essentially. They would also be permitted to band together and bid as a group, sharing a truckload that was far too large for one food bank to use. Here is how the head of the food bank in Comstock, Michigan described it, and I quote, deciding which products to bid on isn't easy, but we know our service area better than anyone else. And we know what kind of niche product, which kind of niche each product might serve. For better or worse, the decision making is now precisely where it needs to be. In short, the system worked. But the reason it worked is really equally important. The approach to food allocation devised by four Booth faculty professors worked because it matched a research-driven framework with on-the-ground knowledge. That combination, practical knowledge plus, plus deep research, it's powerful. And it's the cornerstone of our work at the Rossani Center at Chicago Booth. It is also the unique toolkit that an institution like ours brings to these questions. I believe, maybe like you, that the answers to our biggest problems are out there in the hands of those on the ground. What we need now is a system to scale those ideas and to mobilize more participants to lend their unique toolkit to the work. And that's why I'm especially excited to be part of this particular session today. What brings these folks to the stage is their insights about pipelines of talent that can be mobilized to drive change. 
I, for one, am excited to hear from these experts about how you reshape your work and reshape the world. So I'm excited to kick off this session on Pipelines to Success by introducing you to two people who are doing incredibly, incredible work catalyzing individual impact. Here to join me for this discussion are Kathleen LaCour, Senior Vice President of Corporate Marketing at Blackbaud, and Justin Dillon, Chief Executive Officer of Make It in a Free World and author of A Selfish Plan to Change the World, his new book out, in case you want to pick up a copy. Please join me in welcoming Catherine and Justin to the stage.